So we're here doing, thinking about foresight, foresight meaning thinking about the future. And we've got a bunch of different ways that we've come up with as a civilization to do that. Science kind of changed the world, uh, creating uh, sort of model-based and rule-based and law-based predictions about the future. We also do lots of prediction that is based on just having lots and lots of data and extrapolating in various ways. And of course, markets and, and futures markets give us another way to think about the future. But in the last couple of decades, there have been kind of new players on the block thinking about how can we combine just lots of individual predictive powers of people into one aggregate prediction. Uh, there have been prediction markets around for a while and prediction aggregation platforms. Um, and these are fairly new in a sense still. They're not really that built into the fabric of our society, but I think that may be slowly changing. And I've been really excited to be part of one of them, of the latter, the, the prediction aggregation platforms, Metaculus.com. Uh, it was launched in 2016. Uh, it solicits uh, questions and predictions from just anybody um, and weighs the predictions and keeps track of who does well and gives them a score and weighs their prediction by their score. It's, uh, so, so to try to increase accuracy. It's a science technology focus, uh, has other topics too, but I think it's certainly the biggest platform like this doing science and technology. Uh, we've got about 10,000 registered users now who are making predictions, uh, about 150,000 so far, and on about 1,300 questions. So it's, uh, it still has a lot of room to grow, but uh, is, is a fun and active and an exciting place to be, I think. Um, the best thing about prediction markets and these prediction aggregation platforms is that they work um, insofar as individuals can make predictions. Groups of individuals can make better predictions. Um, so Metaculus as a whole makes better predictions than any of its individual users. And uh, it's very difficult to, to like come up with an easy, quick way to, to express the quality of predictions. But for example, 87% of Metaculus predictions were on the correct side of 50%, so it's like much better than flipping a coin. Um, and there are various other ways you can quantify that. And you can see the whole track record of Metaculus if you're interested uh, on the website itself. So uh, I was very excited that, that Allison uh, hatched this scheme with me to, to try to create a contest here. Um, so both because it's uh, an interesting way to engage with the issues and create good predictions about particular things, but it's just fun and interesting. Um, we've found definitely that through the prediction process and through creating questions, you really get a lot more insight into the topics that you're making predictions about. Um, not just making the predictions, but figuring out what is the right question, how do you make it unambiguous, and so on. Uh, you learn a lot about what might actually happen. So I, I, I really would encourage all of you, I'm curious, how many people here have actually been on Metaculus or signed up to Metaculus? Okay, so actually a fair amount. So if you haven't, it's like really easy. I can just show you then what to do. Um, you go to metaculus.com. There's a sign in or register an account so you can register an account. Uh, you can use Google or Facebook if you don't care about your privacy or you can just sign up by email. Um, we will respect your privacy, of course, but... Uh, so I'm just gonna continue as guest for now. Uh, if I go to, if I search for Foresight, uh, I can find the Foresight 2020 sort of headline question. You can also get that on the spreadsheet, the, the, uh, the Foresight meeting spreadsheet. That'll bring you to here. And you'll see a bunch of lists, you'll see a list of questions here, any one of which, any one of which you can click. So here's one that I made up as to whether the Washington Post or New York Times would quote a prediction from Metaculus or, or a similar place in the next year. Um, I'm going to give that a 38% chance. It's that easy to make a prediction. Um, I'm not signed in, so it makes it an anonymous one. But if you're signed in, you'll make a prediction that'll go in the pot. So get on the site if you like. I, I'd invite you to. It's fun. It's pretty easy to use. Uh, but there's a lot of depth to it and a lot of community interaction. If you make predictions about these things, then your predictions will be checked over the next year. That's not as stressful as it seems. It's OK to predict things wrong. It's all probabilistic. Everybody gets it wrong some of the time. Uh, so don't be stressed. Just have fun, make predictions, and we'll see how it plays out over the next year. So there it is. No. There it is. Um, so I've become convinced that 
if you have a prediction that you want to know and you don't have a scientific model for it or a simulation, you don't have a ton of data, uh, and it's a hard thing that you want that people will be able to pre make predictions on, this is the right way to do it, to have a, a prediction market or an aggregation mechanism like Metaculus. Um, and I really hope that these, whether it's Metaculus or something else, will get really big and really influential because I think having that ability to make general purpose predictions for society and make better decisions is really, really important. But I want to suggest going one step further uh, for the rest of my talk. So first I want to like introduce a little naming about the way at least I think about things. So the world has a lot of possible states, uh, 10 to the 10 to the 120 or so in the observable universe. I'm a cosmologist, so I kind of think this way. Um, it's a stupidly large number of possible ways the universe could be. So we make subsets of it. We can't track them all. We make subsets of it that we call properties. Properties can be any statement that we might make about a property that the world has, like it has this much mass uh, or that uh, Donald Trump was elected president. These are all properties, subsets of the many ways the universe could possibly be. Some properties that, according to an agent or community, have probability of about one, we call them facts. Other properties that the probability is like a little bit less clear or that dis are disputed, we call them opinions. Opinions can mean other things, but here I'm meaning sort of things that could be facts if we just checked more carefully and can kind of like focus down the probabilities. So opinions are things that lots of different people can have different versions of. We're supposed to at least all agree on the facts. Now opinions and facts regarding the future, we call predictions, right? And sometimes we say there are facts about the future, like the sun is gonna come up tomorrow because it's just as sure as lots of other things we call facts, so we might as well call it a fact. But most of them are not. Most opinions or, predictions or, or thoughts that we have about the future are pretty uncertain because the, the universe is that way. There are lots of possibilities for the future consistent with, the poss with everything that we know about the present. Um, but time marches on and non-factual predictions often become facts, right, when the time in question becomes now. So we might have a coin that I'm about to flip, 50-50, whether it's gonna be heads or tails, still 50-50, still 50-50. Once I flip it, boom, it's like 100% that it was heads and 0% that it was tails. So this has suddenly become a fact. It was, uh, I mean, it's a weird to say that it's an opinion, like how the coin will land, but um, a prediction or an opinion about the future. Sometimes um, <clears throat> the, the probabilities can sort of trend one way, like Clinton is really gonna win this election. No, she's really, really gonna win it. No, she's really, really, really gonna win it. And then the fact is that she didn't. Um, so the probabilities can trend one way and then suddenly reverse when the, when the prediction is about now. And at other times it can happen more slowly. Uh, there's no WMDs in, in Iraq. Uh, now there are. Now there might be. Now there probably aren't. No, there really weren't any. Um, so we can see that there are things that, uh, that we can assess probabilities of and it may not be a sort of instant open and shut case whether those probabilities uh, to collapse to like one alternative or the other. Um, so this leads to an interesting possibility of thinking of a spectrum from statements that are about the future, which we call predictions, to statements about now, um, which we can, we can, which we just call statements that may or may not be true. Now we can sort of connect those if we allow. So most most markets are metaculous. Uh, you make predictions and then what actually happened is decided by kind of an oracle. That like for Metaculus is like me or somebody that works for Metaculus. Um, but you don't have to do that. You could just leave it open and let people keep predicting way past the time when the thing actually happened. And in that case, and many prediction markets actually do this, the predictions will tend to converge to a single value. And that value may be what actually happened. But it may not be in the sense that what you're really predicting, if the resolution is by consensus, you're predicting what the consensus is going to be, not what the truth exactly is going to be. So there has to be some sort of backstop. So I want to sort of make a little bit of a proposal uh, going beyond what prediction markets and Metaculus does now to say that uh, we could have propositions where the truth value is determined by self-resolving questions. So you just leave them open until long after the putative thing happens. And you can ask questions about the present like, uh, rather than saying, is X true? You can ask, will it turn out that X has been true? Right? You can predict what is, what is gonna happen uh, in the future in terms of resolving that question. 
But you have to have some backstop that non-convergent questions or every once in a while a question will be declared uh, by some oracle, so to ground the system, keep it from diverging off and uh, sideways. And then <clears throat> that would be a wonderful thing because that would be a way to kind of semi-automatically identify true statements about the present and the future, even when they're foggy in the present. But I think we could go beyond that. And what, uh, the, the second thing that I would really love to see is if Metaculus or some other prediction market could do this, could we then extract predictions or propositions from information sources, feed them into the system, extract their truth value, and then use those, uh, then score those information sources on the accuracy of their claims. And so we could get a very grounded, in prediction, basis for believing some information sources and not others. That's what I'd love to see. And if you uh, come to my session on, uh, on tomorrow, uh, I'd love to talk more about how both of those components could be put together. Thanks. Predictions of I'm making about my puppy. Oh, that's the one that I showed, yeah. Oh. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so obviously having a uh, reliable uh, oracle, a reliable predictor is amazingly valuable, but I'm kind of wondering from the point of view of Metaculus, what are some of the most useful predictions that have been made and come true that were most beneficial rather than just curiosities? Yeah, I think that's an interesting question because I, I think the my feeling thus far is that actually most of the utility has been in posing the questions, honestly. Uh, the process of thinking what are the interesting questions, kind of structuring uh, what the events are going to be and, and which different ways that they go. Uh, and trying to identify what are the interesting things to make predictions on, I think has been the most interesting. For the most part, the predictions that a system like this makes are usually not that surprising, right? It, it tells you this thing that you think is gonna happen is 96% probable. This thing that you don't think is gonna happen is 4% probable. Now, the useful thing that it's telling you is that it's 4% and not 10% and not 0.1%, right? So, so it's rare, I think, that a system like this will give you something really surprising and you're like, wow, I didn't know that that might happen, and then it's right. What's interesting, I think, is that you say, oh, that thing that I might have thought was 1% probable is actually 10% probable or 30% probable. So it's useful insofar as you care about the numbers. Um, and that won't be everybody, uh, but I think it's useful insofar as you care about the numbers. And the numbers it produces are, are accurate. So, so I think it's a little bit, yeah, I'm sort of declining to answer the direct question, but, giving, but, but telling you what I think. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, great, I'm on. So, Christine, am I talking loud enough? <laughs> um, all right, so quickly, for all of those introverts oh, uh, amongst you, all the ones that want to ask really pointed, quirky questions, please use the uh, little um, kind of like notepads that are in, 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 front of, in front of each and every one of you um, here, and Erin will be going around and collecting them. So whenever you have a question down written on them, please wave and she will collect them. That being said, does, is, does anyone in the audience have a question that they want to ask here at the microphone? Anyone? Question? Uh, just come on up, Catherine. Um, all right. How would you contrast what you're doing with the Tetlock super forecasting group? I'd say it's, it's actually very similar. Metaculus has more of a uh, science and tech focus. They're more geopolitics and politics. Um, there's a little bit more of a uh, vision for Metaculus of making a fairly open platform that kind of is large and people can, can buy into in, in all sorts of levels. But the basic methodology of uh, soliciting, forming a reputation, aggregating according to reputation, and so on, I think that's very similar. It's just a great thing that works. Okay, we have time for one more question. I'm sorry, but you'll be around. Join the session tomorrow. Great. Um, I'm very interested. What do you think of the possibility of using Metaculus plus some automation to crowdsource? Uh, I mean, you, you started talking about some of this, like crowdsourcing uh, sources of uh, or sorry, fact-checking sources of information. What are some ways that, uh, you know, are you interested in a combination of automation and crowdsourcing to say, you know, like add the claims that are made on various news sites, you know, 
CNN yeah. versus Breitbart versus whatever um, to, to see what's true. Yeah, very much. I, so I think you know, machine learning is not at the point where it can just answer questions that are on Metaculous. They just require human understanding to understand the question even and how to address it. But it could be that they could be useful enough to extract propositions you know, from new sources and, com and, and try to classify you know, here, here's some axis in which these new sources say this and these new sources say this about this proposition. Um, then some subset of those could go on something like Metaculous in the way that I'm describing. How will this turn out to, to look five years from now, say, when it's obvious what turned out to be true? Um, and then give new sources ratings according to those predictions. And you don't have to put every proposition, just a subset of them, in order to establish those ratings. So super interested in that. We'd love to talk more. Great. Uh, Question is, what do you see as potentially interesting use cases for conditional predictions? That is, conditional on X happen, what is the probability of Y? Yeah, uh, almost infinite in the, in the sense that that's what we do when we're deciding anything. Um, you know, we're, we're running the decision theory of if I do this, then what happens? If I do this, then what happens? If I do this, then what happens? Um, so I think that's a major direction of expansion, like how to make that uh, useful and easy to do with the platform. Right now, you can, of course, do it, um, but there, it, it's not uh, sort of automatic and doesn't set up the, the sort of decision tree that you would like. So huge utility. I mean, that's everything that we decide is on that basis. Um, but actually building the platform to do that well and usefully is something that we still have to do, I would say. Thank you so much.